everyone and the respected professors and HODs of the department and my batchmates. Today our group, Versatile Leonardo, will be presenting our two topics, the branches of external carotid artery and the cutaneous innovation of the dorsum of the foot. I would like to thank Juanish and Shaw Nabo for being the subjects and I would like to immensely thank the anatomy department for giving us this opportunity to participate in such an exquisite event which, is allow which allows us to visualize the different muscles and nerves present in our body with the help of surface marking. Thank you. It's cutaneous innovation on the dorsum of food. So uh, on the right foot, we have drawn the different uh, tendons, uh, the muscles and the nerves supplying them. For that, our creative painters have used different colors to represent different structures. Like they have used light yellow to represent the nerves, uh, light green to represent the uh, extensor retinaculum. The muscle belly is represented by crimson along with uh, um, brown color. The shade of the brown is burnt sienna. Uh, the tendons of the muscles are drawn with the help of uh, white with a slight yellowish tinge, and the bone is represented by pure white color. Uh, on the opposite foot, uh, we have uh, described the different territories of the nerves. Like uh, the territory of the saphenous nerve is represented by light blue. The territory for the uh, sural nerve is represented by light green color. Uh, the territory for this superficial peroneal nerve, which is supplying most of the dorsum, is uh, represented by brown color, that is burnt sienna. And the territory for the deep peroneal nerve is represented by light pink. The medial plantar nerve is shown with the help of uh, uh, dark pink and the lateral plantar is represented with the help of purple. Uh, the different bony landmarks which we have used here are the lateral mandibulus along with the lower part of the anterior, tib uh, anterior tibia and extending these two we have uh, got the superior extensor retinaculum. Deep to this extensor retinaculum passes the different tendons of the muscles like tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus and peroneus tertius. Then the deep peroneal nerve is seen passing between the tendons of extensor hallucis longus and the extensor digitorum longus. So uh, now my friend will uh, continue further with the presentation. So as my friend suggested here, we have the extensor retinoculum. Now the superficial peroneal nerve is so called because it passes superficially to the extensor retinoculum while the deep peroneal nerve passes deep to the extensor retinoculum. Now at the junction of the upper two third and the lower one third of the leg, the superficial peroneal nerve divides into medial and lateral branches. The medial branches divide, uh, supplies the medial side of the great toe and the adjacent second toe while the lateral branches supplies the third and the fourth toe and the fourth and the fifth toe. Now most of the dorsum, uh, most of the dorsum of the foot is supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve except certain parts which are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve. For example, the cleft between the first and the, the great toe and the second toe that is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve, the medial border which is supplied by the saphenous nerve and the lateral border which is supplied by the sural nerve. Now, the uh, common peroneal nerve divides at the lateral side of the neck of the fibula into superficial and deep peroneal nerves. So, in case of a fractured neck fibula, the nerve might be damaged leading to the loss of cutaneous sensation on the dorsum of the foot. In conclusion, I would like to say that uh, the cutaneous innervation of the dorsum of foot is uh, important so that if anyone pinches you on the dorsum of the foot or puts their heel, you can feel the sensation and kick them hard. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.